Good afternoon, guys. Um, happy Mother's Day. Uh, I'm not sure if I wanted to do this message today on Mother's Day, but it just, it was a timing thing. So it's like, okay, Lord, I'll do it. Um, got this in prayer. There's some other messages, but this one's going to be a little raw because there's other messages kind of put together in this that aren't all quite formulated, but they're you know, I'm just following the leading of the Lord. There's got to be a reason, so I'm going to do it. Um, what are you looking for? Cross or a crucifixion? Okay. This was what I, that's, was part of the message. But it's out of Isaiah 31, 3 through 9, and Matthew 13, 3 through 10. Got these in prayer, guys. That's the Lord's very specific. I mean, He'll give me. He, I you know, I have to look them up. Okay. Part of the rawness of this message is where I'm at. Okay. And what's tied to this message about the crucifixion and the cross is let's start with the first part. Okay. There must first be the death of a testator. And I forgot to look that scripture up. I was going to and I got kind of sidetracked. Um, that would be Jesus. He took our place. That's where, that's where I'm heading to with this. The cross is what he took our place for. The crucifixion is a death. There's going to be a death. But we have to die out to ourselves. And that's hard to do. Okay. What's tied into this message is sin in the camp. And you're like, well, how could that be tied in? Because that's what leads us to the crucifixion, not the cross. Crucifixion is, you know, think about it. I mean, how it's all correlated and tied together is that was a form of punishment for a crime. But Jesus was... It was for a crime he didn't commit. It was for him to be a holy sacrifice for our sins. That we could have life eternal through the cross. The crucifixion side of it is what the world wants to do and convict you of the crime. And the devil is behind it. He's actually not behind it, he's running it. He wants to crucify you. What did they yell to Pilate? Just saying, guys. But when we've got sin in the camp, we're headed for the crucifixion, not the cross. And when we're hiding, and there's several ways and forms that this can take place, the hiding part, okay, guys? And I'm going to correlate it into something that recently just happened to me, and it's a storm that I'm one of the many storms I'm just coming through. But I'm still, where I'm having to pray through on this is in the debris field. And I'll, I'll let me clarify the debris field. Semi, I'll spare you the details. But I grew up in Minnesota on the Mississippi River. And of course, every year it floods. Sometimes pretty bad. And afterwards, it always leaves a mess. Sometimes a big mess to clean up. Trees and just debris and just garbage and just stuff. Once the water recedes. So, why I'm saying that is that that's where the Lord has me praying. I've been cleaning up the debris field by myself. Not really able to either. But, and not as a punishment, but knowing I needed to. But I was like, why are you doing all this work and doing all this stuff and things? And I'll spare you the details, like I said, but it's, honey, I'm not just working. I'm praying in the debris field because I got to clean up on aisle 13. 
and let me tell you parts of it so you'll understand it's about the sin in the camp and it's about the same thing what I'm telling you about leading to the cross or the crucifixion going to the cross with our sins and our shortcomings and our undoneness or just accepting the crucifixion and the death and the crime and the punishment that goes with it. Lord told me to do something a while back, several years ago, and I did, I started it. It was gathering things to give to the needy and to whomever he told me to give it to. <clears throat> a lot of it was homeless, a lot of it was ministries, was like I was helping every ministry in the world. That, that's not my, what I'm saying. But there was some. Well, one of them happened to be a homeless shelter in Dallas and in a really bad neighborhood, guys. I'm an old white guy and I wouldn't go there during the, even during the day. But the pastor's running it. I let people sleep in the church. It's a mess. They're really good people, though. They're just in a war zone. And they were picking up sometimes a load a week, truck a load a week of stuff. So what the Lord told me to do when I started this was he said, give away 90% and the 10% I tell you to keep, my eyes are going to be bought and blessed. So I was doing that this whole, for the whole two-year period. I didn't miss anything. It's in the scripture, guys, when I tell you these other scriptures. <clears throat> About sin in the camp. Because I've got to tell you that. Because so you'll know where it's heading to. So I was doing that right. 100%. I had another home, homeless ministry. Not homeless, but it was a, just, they were helping people by feeding them lot so I was sending them stuff well I, they didn't know it but I was paying a guy two to three hundred dollars a day and he'd work all day and he had a 16 foot truck and we'd fill it up with some pretty nice stuff not like oh, super nice but you know nice decent stuff that I'd already gone through and cleaned and made sure it wasn't you know some was clothing some was furniture some was just different, just different things that people had given us So, but they had to stop it because of the, the building wasn't big enough, the expense of all the stuff, and it was just, it just, it wasn't, wasn't working real well for them, so that, so that stopped. Well, I was still doing it with others, and it never stopped. But what I did do was, it's in one of my messages, what's your heading? I deviated just enough because that's the treachery and trickery and the default, the, Symbolically, spiritually, demonic plot that the devil has to destroy us. I should have saw it when people started stealing. And I chose to ignore it. That's what my sin was. But my sin was a sin of pride, and I didn't know it, guys. Because... It's so another one of our messages. He didn't want our wealth and fame, but our guilt and shame. He wants to go to those dirty, darkest, deepest spots. Well, my pride was so buried that I didn't even know it existed. It wasn't that I was blatantly hiding it. I was buried th th 300 feet deep in a concrete bunker. And I wouldn't even go there. And I didn't know it. I did and I didn't. I ignored the warning signs. People started stealing. Things weren't weren't working. They just things around me, and I was and what I failed to do was the most key important thing, which was pray and seek God. Because I asked him that after all this mess happened and this storm, I said, Lord, why didn't you why didn't you warn me when when I could have took care of this? And it became where I couldn't take care of it. It was me in the debris field by myself. Me and the Lord. 
And that's what he wanted, anyhow. It was me and him. In the cool of the day, this just happened to be in a mess that Stevie created. With the devil's help. Of course. Man, he had a heyday with it. But I let him. And I didn't know it. So, I'm going somewhere with this about hiding the sin. So it was so buried that I didn't realize it. And I was trying to, those are some of the people I was trying to help, I actually hurt, including loved ones. Just, man, so many mistakes, missteps. And it all boiled down to, when I got to the end of it, I said, Lord, why didn't you show me this when I could have had a chance to take care of this or seemingly had the opportunity to, to fix some of this stuff? You know what he told me? Because I didn't want you to think that you did it. I'm going to do it. Okay, Lord. So that's where the prayer came in. He, he, he chastised me because a while back he told me, he said, tell my people to be aware of their surroundings. <laughs> this was a year ago, two years ago. And I wasn't listening to that anymore. I didn't pray about these people that I let in, some of them. Because of the pride, because I want to, because in a roundabout way, so yeah, I probably was hiding, but I was using them for my pride, and it was ungodly. Not just the pride, but the people I was using. Cause some of them, some, some of them weren't. Some of them were decent people. They were just pretty, pretty messed up. Some of them were just ungodly people, and of course they were going to be messed up. And it just man, it created them. A monsoon in my life. That's what sin will do to you. It literally almost killed me. Honestly, some of the stuff I went through would have killed 10 men. And I'm not making that up. It's not a pride thing anymore. So, I had to get rid of the pride. And that's why I've been in this debris field. Not just cleaning up the dirt and the trash because works don't save you. You can't. I can't do it. I couldn't do it anyhow without Jesus' help. But it gave me an opportunity to be alone with him and pray. And a constant reminder of what I needed to change in my life. And I'm there now, but not completely, but... I can see the end of this, some of this mess. Pieces of it have already gone away. So, why I said that was the same reason. I didn't go to the cross with this. I didn't seek God in prayer and dedication. I didn't ask Jesus. I didn't ask God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, or His Word. some sort of, of ignorance, but really it was ig ignoring the fact that I had pride and sin in my heart and in my life. And it was hidden, because it, but it was hidden so deep I didn't even realize it was there, guys, okay? One, I mean, so many things God's done for me, that's why I didn't think I had pride in my life. So what's yours? Maybe the same, maybe multiple things, maybe just one, maybe hundreds. We've got to get rid of it. Clean up the camp. Because this is where I'm going with this. We can't go, to, the devil will keep us from the cross and from the blood of the lamb and from bringing it to Jesus because we're so dirty with sin. Oh, it started, it started early on, Adam and Eve, but they were hiding. Don't you think God knew where they were? Sin. Where are you, Adam? He's God. He created the heaven and the earth. He knew, he knew, every, he knew where every hair in Adam's head was. Alone where he was hiding. Come on, guys. And so, Joshua, this is, it's out of Joshua 7, 16. 
or no. Uh, it's not Joshua seven sixteen. I'm sorry. I think it's I think it's Exodus. But anyhow, the story is, and you can just Google it and look it up. But it's about the battle. Achor or Arcor, the ba uh, the Valley of Arcor, and how he lost the battle because there was sin in the camp. He told him not to, told him not to keep anything, and they went out, and some of his men did, and they were stoned to death. The guy that did, because he had buried the silver and gold in his tent, and when Joshua found out about it, he you know, cleared the deck. Saul, it's in, uh, I should have wrote him down. I'm sorry I didn't. Maybe I did. No, I didn't yet write him down. Um, but it was Saul, and he lost the battle too, with one of his battles. And God told him it was about the bleeding of the sheep, the bleeping of the sheep. And the prophet said, well, you know, what is, you know, what is this, Lord? It's because he told Saul specifically. Saul, Saul said, oh, you know, when the prophet confronted him, he said, oh, you know, I did everything the Lord told me to do. Well, that's what I did. Everything the Lord told me to do, except for that little deviation, which is what the enemy uses. I call them hooks, but they're different things that are in our lives, that sins in our lives, and he's playing them like an orchestrated instrument pulling and jerking and twisting it up. And sometimes we don't even know it. Could be people, places, things, stuff we've did, stuff others have did, anger, pride. Sin is sin, guys. And that's what the enemy wants to use to keep in you, to, to jerk your chain, basically, and keep you in chains. So, Saul did, did told the prophet he did everything he could. He said, no, he didn't, because he told you not to take any of the animal, not to keep anything of the spoils. Cain and Abel. Perfect example of what I'm saying. Why was, why was his offering? Why did, why did he have to kill his brother? Because the offering wasn't acceptable to the Lord. Why wasn't it acceptable to the Lord? So it's correlating into what I'm saying, guys. It's our, our, our burnt offerings are not acceptable to the Lord because we've got sin in the camp. And we're not taking it to the cross. We're taking it to the crucifixion. We're looking to the crucifixion, not the cross. Where it was done and finished and our salvation was made whole for eternity if we choose. Instead, we're choosing to live in sin and stay in sin and hide. Even the mightiest son, the mightiest man of God, Elijah, hiding in the cave. God confronted him. What are you doing here, dude? He didn't, that's my paraphrasing, but you know, that's what God said. What are you doing here, Elijah? Oh, well, the prophet, this is going to try to kill me, and blah, 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 and da, 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 blah, 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 blah. No different than what the world's doing, man. Look what they try to do with all these diseases and just garbage and the political system and all this garbage and wars and rumors of wars and uh, boggle your mind if you still got one after you think about all that stuff. <clears throat> Sin in the camp, guys. It's time to come clean. Bring it to the Lord. Bring it to the cross at Calvary. Let it washed in the blood of the Lamb and washed away. I'm not talking about, oh, you know, you just get a, a free pass, don't pass go, everything's forgiven, and da 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 da. And it is. But you got to bring it there with a clean heart and mean it and leave it. And don't pick it up. No fishing. Don't pick it back up. Oh, God forgave me. So I, what did he tell the woman that was caught in adultery? Oh, and this one's free. By the way, where was the man? But anyhow, go and sin no more. Where's your accusers? I don't accuse you, but go and sin no more. Don't do it again. Don't stay in it. Don't keep it hidden. 
What you hidden sin today, guys? What are you hiding? Adam was hiding from God because of the sin of, sin of what they did. It, was, it, it wasn't just Eve. Everybody wants to blame Eve. Adam did it too. Come on, guys. He was just as guilty. He could have said no. That's not what God said. I'm not doing it. It wasn't Eve's fault. It was the enemy's plot and ploy to destroy mankind. They just fell for it. So yes, somewhat it was their responsibility and their fault to a point. But what I'm saying is we can bring it to the cross, not the crucifixion. So what are you looking for? The cross or the crucifixion? But you got to get rid of sins in your camp. We all got them. What's what's in your camp, guys? I'm not fishing for information. I don't expect. I don't want to hear. You know. You don't have to make a public declaration of it. God already knows. You need to bring it to him. Pure and clean. Wash your hands. Of that sin that's in your life. That sin that's in the camp. Because <clears throat> I'm going to end with this because this message is getting a little too lengthy and I'm sorry. But Isaiah 31, 3 through 9 is, is not necessarily good news. The end of it is, but the beginning of it isn't. But Matthew 3, 13, 3 through 10, is about the sower that went out and seeds. So are you going to be that good ground where it's going to flourish? Or are you going to be like a lot of, I'm just going to pick on the charismatics because I was in that, some of that movement, sort of. Not really, but I've been in Pentecostal holiness, charismatic, one of the largest denominations in the world, you name it. <clears throat> Preached in some, several of them, too, for years. One of them for 10 years. Or are you going to be like that one that it falls, but doesn't get rooted and grounded in the Word? And then when the sun comes and the storms come and the torment comes or the the disease comes or whatever comes your way that's not good you can't stand because you got no because you got no you got no backbone no roots nothing to hold you up but your filthy self some are sown into the cares of this life silver and gold why was it think about that why was it silver and gold that's what america's all about silver and gold you know we even hired a president said he was a great president because he was a good businessman because he had sold plenty of silver and gold we didn't look at what the man was about i'm just saying guys i'm not politicizing it but those are our leaders the cares of this life or is it going to be on good ground solid rock build your house upon that rock when the gates of hell won't be able to stand the storm won't be able to wipe you out you won't be built upon sand the cross not the crucifixion we're all guilty as charged guys that was God's salvation plan was his son on this hat in the pile of debris, actually, honestly. Gap. God answers prayers. He's the God of the gap. What are you lacking? Pray about it. Bring it to the Lord. Start asking him what to do. If you haven't already. Start looking for get the sin out of your life. Start, you know, some of some of you, you probably know. I, I knew it was in there. But I just forgot where I put it. Oh, guy, you know, so that, I mean, maybe I got an excuse. No, I don't. But I'm just saying, I, it, it was so buried, I forgot where it was, what it was. That's how subtle the enemy can be. He didn't care. He's got all this stuff devised to destroy us. And God's got all this stuff set up to set us free. 
Where are you going to go? The cross or the crucifixion? Love you guys. Um, see you soon.